Hello YouTube users, my name is Tripsy and today I got a tutorial for the starter house you can see behind me. You've seen the thumbnail, you know what you want to build, let's hop right into building it. This is the shape of the house that we are working with today. It is a bit of an odd shape but I should have some numbers next to the blocks you are seeing in front of you. I also specifically used the black and blue wool just to make it a little bit easier on how big this house is. And these are the main building blocks for today. We have some wood, oak and spruce and also a little bit of variance on these two woods like trapdoors. Got the cobalt deep slide and we'll also use some stairs and slabs we got the dripstone blocks granite and we'll probably also use some stairs for that for the chimney a couple of glass panes some moss and the blocks that come with moss like the azaleas and also some regular grass and just so you guys know where to build this the door will be right over here let's start on this corner right here with the oak logs and raise one pillar up by five on this one as well which means that there are three blocks in the middle. I forgot to add end the side over there, but you should have some of that if you're building your starter house and have the deep slate as well. If not, you can also use cobblestone for this part. We place three over there with three stairs just against that. So these three stairs will actually be one outside of the house shape that I created. And let's actually leave this open for now because we will build the door over here later on. But uh, that's going to be a little bit of detail. So let's actually get the shape in first. So we'll move right over here on these two sides, place the pillars as well, going up by four uh, once you've placed the bottom one, so they are five high. And then for this one, place your stripped spruce logs in the bottom, with your uh, spruce planks on top of them, and then create a shape like this. Actually, hold on for a little second, with a spruce there on top of there instead of the full block. Turning around the corner over here on this part as well, five blocks tall, strip spruce in the middle over there, with the spruce planks going all the way up to there. Over here, once again, to the corner, five blocks high. This corner as well, five blocks high. On the bottom one, the stripped spruce over there as well. Spruce planks, and we're creating a little window over here as well. And over here, oh, that's the wrong block, spruce planks like this. And those will be your two windows for right here. Spruce stairs, upside down, over there. So you should have some shapes like this until now. Going back to the back over here, right over here, the spruce lock going all the way up. And this part will be all the way close down, so just spruce planks all the way to there. It's getting kind of repetitive right now, but the next corner also a five tall pillar. Spruce at the bottom, planks all the way over here because we will have the chimney over here. And this might go into the house uh, for a little bit, so we might remove some blocks over here. Over here, once again, all the way to the corner. Not that one, but over there. The stripped spruce looks all the way at the bottom. And I want to mimic that window right over here. So that should be right there. Then I want one on this side as well. Like that. And let's just close the part over here right off. Just like that. The part over here is going to be a little bit different. We have the spruce, or I'm sorry, the oak looks on this one and on that one. Going up by five, once again, this part will have the spruce look, and then run over there, skip through, and the window like this. And then these over here will just be entirely closed off. One over here as well. And then the last part to do before we move on to the door is actually the part over here, which will just be all the way closed off. So from above, you should have something like this. It is handy if you know what kind of floor block you want to use. I'm going to go with the dark oak, but you can use any block you like. Uh, because we need those three blocks over here as placeholder blocks for the door. Let's place the spruce door right over here on the front of this dark oak. And then the spruce trap doors going up like this. Uh, three blocks high and one above the door as well. Should look like this from the front. Get your spruce stairs and place them on both of these sides. And then just the spruce planks all the way on top like that. And in my opinion, this is looking like a fancy door. You could even place some trap doors up on those sides as well. Uh, but I think that's a little bit too much. And I do like the lock showing on both sides. We're going to make the house a little bit taller because we will have to make some place for the roof to be. And this is going to be a little bit difficult because of the uh, rather odd shape of this house right here. But we'll try our best and I'll try my best to show you guys as best as I can. Let's actually start on the back side over here. First of all, get your oak lock over here as you can see like this with some spruce logs going all the way to this block right here so one above the window and then the oak log over there as well then just moving in like that with the regular spruce planks in the middle going up once again spruce plank in the middle 
and then one up with the oak. Lastly, over here we'll try to mimic the back side, but we won't go all the way over at this side, so it will be a little bit interesting to see. Let's place the oak log over here with some stripped spruce logs like that. Oak log over here again, spruce planks, oak log, spruce plank, oak log. And for now, we'll just leave it like this. On this side, we'll go up as well with the oak logs like this. Strip spruce in the middle. Oak logs like this. Jungle plank and an oak log. This side, we'll go with two oak logs like this with the strip spruce in the middle and one oak log on top of it. So let's first connect the roof up. That will leave a couple of weird blocks over here, over there as well. But we'll fill them in afterwards. There's a little bee flowing over there. I don't know if you can see him. Look, there he is. So gather up your couple deep slate stairs and slabs and let's actually get working on the roof. We'll start at the front with one over here to kind of overlap it. Going all the way up like this, just one at a time going upside down, regular one, upside down, regular one until we meet with this one over here. We'll place an upside down like this with a deep slate slab on top of it. Over here, we'll just connect it to the look like that. Skip this part for now, go over here, overhang it by one, upside down, regular, upside down, regular, all the way to the top. If I can place my blocks correctly. <laughs> once you're here, once again the upside down stair with the slab on top of it. And let's go all the way down as well with just a regular, upside down, regular, upside down, in that pattern, all the way down, until you meet the wall over here. Go out by one as well, go into the corner. Move it out like this, and again with the upside down, regular, upside down, regular. I think the pattern is very clear now, so I won't uh, say it again. Upside down like this, slap on top, all the way down again, till you are over here. And since we have the window high up over here, we're going to make a nice variation over here. So turn the stair like this, get a double slap, just like that. One more double slap over here going up, and then one going down. And then just connecting it up with the stair like that. Stair like this. And then you can overhang it over here. So it should look like that. And it's difficult to show up in this tight corner. But you should be fine. Over here you already know what to do. Upside down regular upside down. <laughs> over here upside down slab on top. And just going down once more. Simply like that. And then just connecting it up until you are right there. For the roof itself, we'll use the moss blocks uh, along with some of the azaleas and the grass or... F actually, ferns could work as well if you have them. But let's actually just place them in over here firstly. Like this, like that. And then going down over here. So that we can figure out what to place over here. I'd like to go with the roof first. So you just have to place one roof like this, one like that. And that is actually all. Then all you have to do over here is just place one uh, placeholder block like that and then the spruce log in front of it so you won't see it from the outside. So like that it is connected. Now to create the roof itself it is actually quite easy you just have to follow along but I'll show you guys carefully because I know a lot of you people struggle with the roof itself. We already have this part over here so let's actually continue from here on this block and moving it all the way until it connects over there. And over here as well, going one up, just go along with the corner, just like that, this way as well, with the corner and the top one as well, to kind of turn the corner over here, so it connects over there. Then on this part we can go one down, to kind of connect it up where it should be lining up uh, is over there, so that connects like this, going one down. You should be able to just follow along with this corner and then one below that as well to have this filled in. Then the one on top can just connect with the one right there and then the one above that goes all the way along to the top over here. So this is actually the hardest part of the roof done. On this side it's just as simple as going from one side all the way to the other and just repeating that a couple of times. When we started laying out the roof, I said to skip this part, but that was because I forgot how to do it. But just create your corners like that. Move them out by one. Get an upside down stair like that. Now with your slabs, go like that. So that should be looking quite good. 
and then with the moss, just connecting it up like this. Now that we have the whole shape of the house in, it is time for the fun part, and that is detailing. Let's actually start with the chimney up here. Let's move it up with a mixture of some granite and dripstone blocks. Until you meet with the roof over here, we will actually just break through it like that. Go up again with your mixture. So once you're at the same level as the first layer of moss over here, I want to go inwards with my stair and then connecting it up to over here so that we continue with just a one wide chimney. The height of the chimney, I want it to be one higher than the top layer of moss. Place my campfire on top, surrounding it with some spruce trapdoors and then just a granite wall on top of that. And it should look like this and you should be able to just see the smoke over here. Then from the other side, you of course are able to see the full chimney in its glory. All the way down of the chimney, I like to thicken it out just a little bit. So just with some dripstone and some stairs like that. I can thicken it out a little bit. Let's actually get one granite piece over there. And that looks a little bit better. One obvious thing to do is of course layering in the windows. And I would like to go with some oak trapdoors for the sides of it. And I'll do that all the way around. Getting the oak trapdoors on the right side of the window. Unless it's not really possible. Over here I'd just like to go with the trapdoors on the left side and then also on the right side to have it uh, like kind of looking even. And then over here as well I could just do them both on the right side like this but I think that looks kind of odd so I would like to put this one on the left side as well. And then the one over here can just go on the right side. For the roof I'd like to just really randomly place in some of the azaleas not too much because I want the regular azaleas as well. So just uh, on some different levels, maybe two kind of next to each other over there. Uh, one more over here, so that like every spot you look at it, you can see at least one of the flowering azaleas. And I think we should have like, two more over here as well. And then with the regular azaleas, just place them in as well, just kind of randomly. Uh, from With these ones, I like to go just a little bit more because they are the same kind of green as the moss and don't really stand out as much as the flowering ones. And just kind of place them <laughs> really randomly. There is really no, no technique to what I'm doing over here. Uh, until you're satisfied, so like this, I think it looks quite nice, actually. Uh, apart from that one. I don't know. I just thought there was too much on the top floor. And then with the grass, just placing it all the way around. I like to have a lot of it, just so it looks very overgrown. It's just a look I like quite a lot. I think something like this is plenty of grass. And then for some extra detailing, you can also use uh, actually any of the leaves that you like. Uh, the ferns look good as well, even some flowers that match the flowering azaleas. Just as long as it's really overgrown, but I'm just going to keep it like this. And we have come to the part that is called extra detailing. Of course, you can just use your house like this. It really looks fine, uh, apart from the interior, of course, but I will leave that up to you. Because this is a starter house, so I'm... I mean, I understand if you just want to fill it to the brim with chests. Uh, that's something I do in the beginning quite often as well. But if you want some added detail, I can show you guys what to do. One very simple detail is just a little flower pot. I would like to place a oak slab over there with either grass blocks, pot saw, moss blocks or even dirt on top of here. I'm going to go with pot saw for this one with some spruce trap doors surrounding it. And then pick any one of your lovely flowers. I'm just going to go with the blue orchid because that's my favorite. And place it on top of that. And you can do that in front of every window. You can even do it over here as well. But I would like to show you guys uh, something different for right over here. But before I do that, I would like to go around and just add a lot of flower pots all the way around. And also just using varying flowers. For this one, I'm going to put the lily of the valley. Over here, it is difficult to place it in because you can't get the trapdoors on both sides. And what I like to do is get a note block. And place that in the middle over here with a uh well actually an oak trapdoor beneath there and then you can also place something over here and i would like to go with a sign just an oak one place it on top of there press done and then just finish it off with the trapdoors on the sides and i think that actually looks very cool and then of course afterwards you have to place your flowers in there i'm going with an oxide daisy and an nah i'd like color an alley over here Two lollipops. So one thing that I like to do in some uh, kind of open spaces is to make a lowered flower box. I'm just going to pop out a space like this. 
place in some of my coarse dirt and this I think works best with a mix of mossy and regular cobblestone together with some tough and andesite but if you don't have the mossy ones just the regular cobblestone will work fine as well as I will display right now. Uh, replace the blocks right over here. As I just placed out you can also replace this one it isn't really necessary but let's do it for now. And just place in a mixture of your blocks that you will use uh, tough as well some andesite and get some cobble to place that off. Raise some of them up, so I'll just raise that one and also the one right over here. For the rest of them, just use some stairs and slabs. Uh, for this one, I will use a slab over here because otherwise it will connect up kind of weirdly. Uh, just a stair, maybe like that. Uh, one maybe over there. Uh, one more slab like that and a slab like that as well and I think this looks fine. Then later on you can place some candles or lanterns or maybe even just a regular torch on there. Also keep in mind that you do need to extend these blocks right here so I'll just replace those and those as well and that looks fine already. But the thing that makes this look beautiful is a variation of a different greenery. So I would like to go up with some of the flowers like that. Uh, maybe even replace some stuff over here so that we can place in some water right over there. Replace that one and I think you can just place the sugar canes on top of course dirt. Yes you can. I'd like to have that grow as high as possible actually. And the thing that works best in here is the two high flowers. So let's get a collection of them. Place them in like uh, maybe like so. And actually, before we close it off, I would like to have a little small flower. Uh, maybe actually there's that one. Place that over there for some extra detail. The last one right over there. And I think this looks very cute. One more thing that sets your building into your surroundings is a nice path. So I'll just go like this sporadically, place in some of the coarse dirt uh, going down for now over there some path blocks as well but not too many and then uh, actually let's get some oak planks as well to kind of finish this off something like this to kind of make it look natural that's maybe a bit too much oak but i think this is fine then what you need to do uh, if you can see those kind of blocks you kind of have to Lows them off with the according block that is above them otherwise it would look kind of odd but like this it is already fine and then just connect up some of the oak uh, slabs like that so you can smoothly walk up there and just this simple part like this actually gives it a very nice atmosphere over here one more simple detail you can do is have a little briefcase in front of your house, uh, just a fence with a barrel on top of it. You can also actually get a lightning rod in the new update and do it like that. But I think it looks more natural with the fence over here and extra bonus points from me if you place a carpet on top of it for a little bit of color. As the house is standing behind me, I am confident to call it finished. You can always add in some more custom details like custom trees, uh, farms, anything that you will need to just kind of plop around, maybe even some loose chests all the way around. It will make your house look personalized and very starter worthy and that is the vibe that we are going for for today. I thought I would pop the shaders on for the outro itself and just to show you guys how it looks with the shaders if you play like this. Uh, I mean, I already liked it without the shaders but the shaders just give it an extra chef's keys. Anyways, my name is Rubsy. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video and are ready to create this starter house in your world, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear that. Please make sure to hit that like and if you haven't subscribed already, please make sure to subscribe. We have just passed 1000 subscribers and I thank all of you very kindly for that. A special video will be coming in the near future, but I have to wait for a replay mod as I do have to do that for three other projects to be able to film that quite nicely. I'll be logging up for now. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next video. Goodbye.